Psalm. We're going to look at Psalm 2 today. Psalm chapter 2. Just a couple of verses to kind of get us going. Psalm 2. Long time ago, I memorized this entire chapter. Uh, it's a very good psalm. It uh, tells us who the Lord is, really, in the Old Testament. It tells us to look for the Anointed One. Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, and against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder, and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Amen. The Lord shall have them in derision. Yes. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion, I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. God is good part of the time or all the time? All the time. He's prom made some promises there. Now let's go on to verse 9. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, rejoice with trembling, kiss the Son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way, and his wrath is kindled but a little. Watch that last phrase. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. This week, America will elect a new president. When we meet together again next Sunday, we will know who it is. At the same time, we will see and understand what direction our country is headed, whether it be more the same or if the Lord is gracious and allows us something different. Regardless of who is elected, it becomes our duty as American Christians and as a church to pray for both our country and its new leaders. Solomon said in Proverbs 21 and verse 1, Solomon said, the king's heart, the king's heart, is in the hand of the Lord, and he turneth it uh, with us whoever he will. So my admonition to you, pray this week, pray, and vote if you have not voted. He also said in Proverbs, Solomon would write in Proverbs 14 and verse 34, he would say, righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And 2 Chronicles, I want to read that to us. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, a very familiar verse. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal or I will heal their land. Just because things are going on in the world, you know, a lot of things are happening in the world that we don't necessarily agree with as Christian folks. Could you agree with that? Yes. Well, just because something's going on and it's popular doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. America needs healing. America needs healing. David the king asked in Psalm 2, 
He asked this question, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? David said in Psalm 118, verse 8, it is better to trust in God than to put confidence in man. Verse 9, he says in Psalm 118, verse 9, it is better to trust in God than to have confidence in the prince or the king or the president. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than the mightiest of kings. Our confidence, our hope, our security is in the blessings of God. This Tuesday, millions of Americans will go to the polls and cast what I call a sacred vote. You will vote for the person that you have the most confidence in. The person that you believe will lead America to prominence and power uh, 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 once again, I said, throughout the world. Hopefully, they will not lead us down a primrose path to destruction. Israel trusted Moses to lead them to the promised land. Israel trusted Joshua to lead them in battle when they arrived in the promised land. And in 37 battles, Joshua would lead the children of Israel. 37 battles. And they would have 37 victories under the leadership of Joshua. For nearly 250 years, America has been known as the home of the bra uh, brave and the land of the free. Many Americans have paid the ultimate sacrifice to, to keep our country free. And this is my opinion. Shame on any professional athlete or Hollywood actor who turns their back towards their flag. America is not perfect, but she's still the best thing going. And I also say I thank God I live in Texas. Because <laughs> I think Texas is at the top of the heap. <laughs> America has been known for the most part around the world as a God-fearing Christian nation. In fact, we say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. But things are changing. And in my humble opinion, not for the better. Money is not our God. Power is not our God. Position is not our God. But the Lord Jesus Christ, He is our God. In August of 2008, one of our former presidents addressing the World Council in Turkey said, said it proudly, that America was no longer a Christian nation. At least not just a Christian nation. And while that statement may have some truth, it is not something to be proud of. David said in Psalm 9 and verse 17, the wicked or the heathen shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. The question is, which God are we serving? Or which God are we following? I think it was Jesus. Again, there's Jesus who said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Jesus said, I and my father are one. Uh, Jesus said, no man can come to the father but by me. It is possible to say that you believe in God and still die and go to hell. Is that possible, Brother King? According to James, the brother of Jesus, 
who said, even the devils believe and they tremble. Why do the heathen rage is the question. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Why do they believe a lie? Satan, my friend, is the prince and the power of the air. And he is the father of all lies. They rage uh, because they know that it is by the way of the cross that men will, be, uh, will come home. Jesus is the Redeemer. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior. He is the Anointed One. He is our atonement. That means he is the one who paid our sin debt. For without the shedding of his blood, there is no remission of sin. They, say, they rage because they have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Even the well-manicured, the well-dressed, self-righteous, they all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. They rage because their God cannot save them. Only Jesus, only Jesus has the power and the ability to forgive sin. They rage because they must call on him whom they have crucified. Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. They rage because God was in Christ. Get that. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. They rage because Jesus was God in the flesh. Anyone who denies that truth is antichrist. They rage because our God is the one true and living God. I hear you, Lord. <laughs> if you're watching by YouTube, that was a big clap of thunder. I hope it was. Anyway, maybe the Lord's coming. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then he asked the question. He asked the question 2,000 years ago, and he asked the question today. He asked it to all of us. Do you believe me? Jesus said it. I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe me? He asked that question. They rage because they have gods that have eyes, but they cannot see. They rage because they have gods that have mouths, but they cannot speak. They rage because they have gods that have ears and they cannot hear. David said, I cried unto the Lord and he heard my voice. And I can assure you, God hears your voice. Our God can hear even the whispered prayer from the smallest child to the, elderless, to the elderly saint who is taking their last breath of life. God can hear the faintest cry. Our God can hear even the smallest sparrow that falls to the ground. Our God speaks and he says to all people everywhere that my sheep hear my voice. They know me and they, uh, they hear me and they follow me. The heathen rage because their hope is in a false God. While we believe in one true and living God, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. They rage because their hope is in money, 
is in their position of prominence. For thousands of years, the world and Satan have tried to break our bands asunder. But Jesus said and made the promise, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you, the church. You are much more powerful than you think you are. God is on your side. God's word is true, and God's word is very powerful. We believe it to be true, even if we don't quite understand it all. We still believe it to be true from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. While we know as Christian people, we are far from perfect. But we also know that we've been born again. We belong to him. We're in his family. Hallelujah. We're in the will. Amen. I don't know about you, but I think my God, my heavenly father is pretty rich and I'm in the will. Hallelujah. Man, I haven't been in too many wills, but praise the Lord. We're in his will. <laughs> He alone is the almighty, all-powerful Elohim God. He is willing and able to forgive all manner of sin. He can make the vilest sinner clean. He has power to cast our sins away as far as the east is from the west. What a shame it is for so many people to be so religious that they think somehow they can obey this law or obey that law and somehow be good enough to make it. We can never do that. We have all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. Only by the power and the working of Almighty God can we be saved. <laughs> all of our sins are cast away. God can love even the prodigal. Anybody know a prodigal anywhere? Probably all of us have known some. <laughs> Russ is admitting it. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Salvation is a gift. Yes, amen. And shout hallelujah, you've been gifted with the gift of salvation. It is a gift. If I own something, I can give it to whoever I want. And salvation belongs unto God. And it is a gift from God. The whole world has been given every opportunity to put their faith and trust in the Lord. John taught us that men loved darkness rather than light and righteousness. For thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing. I said, what does leasing mean? It means I seek after lies. I, I seek after deceit. We as a nation, we, you and I as a nation, are at a crossroads. Psalm 5, Psalm 5, verse 1 and 2. Give ear to my words or listen up. O Lord, consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray and unto thee alone. For one day, the true king will come, and he will rule with a rod of iron, and he will dash them to pieces who have opposed him, the nations and kings who have stood against him, the heathen rage, because God hath highly exalted our Savior and given him a name that is above all other names. The heathen rage. The heathen rage. You know, Satan has a way of reminding us of our past, doesn't he? He may got a past, he may got a few things in our life they're not very proud of. 
Every time somebody reminds you of your past, you think Satan trying to remind you, you just remind the devil of his future. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. Today, like all Sundays, we give people an opportunity to put their faith and trust in Jesus as their Savior. Blessed are all they, is the way that Psalm finished, blessed are all they that put their trust in the Lord. Why do the heathen rage? They rage because God's people are praying for their nation. And there's power in your prayers. The heathen rage against all that is godly and all that is good. And your prayers, your prayers can turn our nation around. The heathen are raging. Satan is trembling. When God's people get on their knees and begin to pray for the prayers of a righteous man, the prayers of a righteous woman will avail much. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. That's a prayer, isn't it? When we call on the name of the Lord, is that a prayer? Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. It's a promise shall be saved. Anytime, anywhere you do that, even in a rainstorm, you can call on the Lord and He can hear. My friend, we need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for one another. We need to pray for our church because there's power in your prayers. And I can assure you, Satan trembles when we get on our knees. Let us bow our heads now, if you would. Father, we thank you for this message. We thank you, Lord, that you're watching over us, taking care of us. Thank you, Lord, for uh, all that you've done. We thank you for our country. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Thank you for the men and women who have made such sacrifice for our freedoms that we enjoy even now. Now, Lord, we're asking we are on our knees asking that you would spare our nation, that you would give us godly men and women to lead us and guide us in uh, our, our uh, ways that we would trust you and, and believe in you. Lord, our nation is headed down a road that doesn't look good. Please, dear God, intervene, get in the way and turn us around. For you said, if your people, which are called by your name, would call on you, would call upon you, that you would hear us and you would heal our land. Righteousness still exalteth the nation. Help us, Father, and direct us. Today, Lord, if there's someone who's listening who is not a Christian, you made the promise. You made the promise. Whoever would call, you would save. So I'm praying today that they will do that. And then, Lord, if there are some people, some prodigals who are out there and gone away from you, not living for you the way they used to or the way they should, would you wake them up, bring them back home and help them to live for you and serve you the right way? Lord, I pray for your will to be done. We pray for our nation. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Stand with us, please. Turn to what number, Brandon? 331. 331. You thank God hears the prayers of his people. If you do, let's pray. Let's pray for God to heal our nation.